There you go, right. Right. So that's how a half step should be. And again, you guys, if you're just wondering, off the top of your head, if you played that divide, that opens with the half step going up. Viola is it? I don't know if it's in the viola book. Cello, it's not in that book. The violinist, you'll all eventually play that if you have Oh, it is in the viola book. Okay, good. Well, for cello, it's not. So that's it. Uh, there's. Oh, you know what? Piece begins with a half step for cello. A half step going down. Do 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 t t t. French folk song right at the beginning of book one. That begins with the descending half step. Now, as promised, some sight reading for today. Finally. Tying all this stuff together about what we've been doing with solfege <coughs> and rhythm training. Who in here has had to do sight reading in the past? A little bit. Tricky even, or, or is it pretty easy? It is pretty tricky. Now, how long have you been reading out of books, like reading written words? like about four or five years at least. Was it easy to do at first? Was it easy to pick up a book and just start reading it when you were in kindergarten, first grade? No, it takes a while to get used to seeing how the words are put together, how chapters are organized. It's just like reading music. At first it's going to be, it's tricky. You guys have only played for maybe four, who, who's played longer than four years in here? Nicolette? Sarah? Emily? Okay. Now, but for the first year, maybe the first two years, you probably played mostly by ear. You were not, your teacher didn't give you a book and say, learn this on your own. <coughs> That's why in our class this year, one of my favorite things that we've changed this class to is learning how to sight read and getting to do that in class. Hopefully for the next few months on a weekly basis. Now, we're going to start with something that's going to be pretty easy. I'm not going to try to jump any levels here. I'm going to write something. In this key signature, the key signature that has two sharps. Does anyone know what the name of this key signature is? The key with two sharps. Miss Beninsky. Mm -hmm. It's the key of D major, right. It's good to know that, but in sight reading, you really don't need to know the actual name of the key, but you have to look at this. Mm -hmm. If you don't look at your key signature, you really don't know what notes to play. In the future, if you're given a key signature like this, I wrote a tricky flats key up there earlier. What if you're given that you don't look at the key signature at all? There's no open strings in that key except for E. Well, yeah, if you played your open strings, you'd be playing three wrong notes. Now, moving back over here, I'm going to write this in this time signature. So before, as I'm writing this up here, I want you guys to already try to think in your head how this is going to sound. You know what, I'm going to add another sharp for violinists. It's only going to be four measures long. As you can see, I've written something up here. Does it look like the rhythm is really challenging for you guys? Do the notes look challenging? You might be surprised though when you try to tie it all together and sight read it. Who wants to volunteer to do this one first? Miss Gano, your hand went up immediately. How about you get your violin out? As she's doing that, I'm going to write up something in alto, but for our Oh, do either of you almost have their instruments today? Miss Benitsky, Miss Richard. Ah. Oh. All right. Well, you're off the hook for today, Violas. Now, Sarah, before you play it, remember when we were doing the rhythm stuff? I wanted you to count in your head before you started, so you're setting a tempo before you begin. Sarah, what's that, what does the time signature mean in this case? Which one? 
two beats in a measure and the quarter note gets the beat. So before you start, you want to set a quarter note tempo. You would think to yourself, And then you're setting yourself a pulse to try to keep this steady as you play. So Sarah, if you want to even count out loud before you start, I think I'd like to hear that counting to make sure you're starting at a good tempo. One, two. All right, class, how did she do? I thought she did perfect. That was excellent. No, thing, no mistakes with that. And... I think it's a lot easier when you start and you really give yourself a sense of tempo. If I could see your violin, Sarah, I think another useful thing to do before you start, even in sight reading, or definitely before you perform a piece or perform a lesson, is to go... So what did I do before I began? Nicolette? Right, kind of a sniff. Who does this? <gasps> Who does that? Right, Miss Shelley used to do that. I think she's toned it down, but she used to in her group classes. <gasps> her huge sigh, big, big gulp of air. But right, you want to give some kind of gesture. You guys, in sight reading and performing, the last thing you want to do is this. start without taking any kind of breath or giving yourself any preparation because then you're not setting your mind you're not putting your mind into a music into a music performing well mindset as we call it it really helps if you're feeling the tempo before you start if I just tell I'm going to just say out loud what I'm thinking in my head much more likely to start it correctly. Now, Sarah, thank you very much. Now, I'm going to put something up here, or let's see, okay, let's stick with this one just for a moment. What if, what if you were having a real hard time sight reading that, or learning it on your own? For somebody younger than you guys, maybe a little less experienced. What you would do is just what we've been doing for the past few months. Clap the rhythm by itself. If you're having a hard time understanding the rhythm, just take it by itself and clap it. And then, the other thing to do, if you're having a hard time knowing how the notes should sound, we're in A major, and we're starting on A. So this is going to be Do. Do, 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 Re, Re. And it only moves between Do and Mi. It doesn't go further than that, so it's only using the first three notes of the scale. Let's say I take this one. Same example, and if you were asked at home to learn it in this key. And I'm going to move the same note, these play the or write these it's the same grouping of notes in this key. Do you want to try to read this one? Oh, did you put your violin away? Okay. Do you want to try? Give it a shot. Is, that a, is it okay for trying yeah, again? Sure. Beautiful. You did this one so well, Sarah. We know how this should sound now. We sang, she played it in A. And Sarah, when you played this, remember, we're using Do, Re, and Mi only. Are these whole steps, half steps, or a combination of the two? It's fine. Okay. So do, re, and mi. Are they full steps between them or half steps? Steps between them. So 
dog right here, full step, and full step, and full step. It should sound the same, but only in this key. Now, where is that on your violin? Do you know? Right, it's low one on the D string, and the fingering is going to be a whole step to two, whole step to three, no hugging fingers. Give it a shot, Sarah, but expect it to sound similar to that, just in another key. Not bad. I think you need a little wider space. I can tell you were tempted to put a half step between two and three because you're really used to that fingering. Do it as a good, strong whole step, though. Take it again. seven sharps, and it would sound the same, it would just be on different notes. All right, thank you, Sarah. Your sight reading quota for the day, for the, maybe the next couple weeks, is done. Now, let's get back to a more familiar key. And as I write this, I want a volunteer to go ahead and get, start moving towards their violin. I'm going to stick with the same key. <coughs> We're in the key of A major. Let's move it to 4-4 four, four time. This will open up sounding like a tune that you guys have just played. sledding last weekend? Ah, yeah. excellent. <laughs> Snowboarding? What kind of sled, Ian? I don't know. Does anyone have one of those disc-shaped metal sleds? I don't know if they still make those. Yeah, there's a, one of my, well, you guys, it's too old of a movie, one of my favorite movies. Involves someone on a little, one of those metal sleds putting a, some kind of grease on the bottom that, that's so slippery he goes phew, down the hill like a firecracker and goes across the expressway and flies into a Walmart <laughs> Christmas display. <laughs> right, it's a National Lampoon's Vacation Christmas. That's all this. Is this your artwork, Sarah? No, Ian, you're the one who has the really crazy cover. Let's see what's on here now. Okay. Um, not just kind of random notes written up, nor is it just a bunch of quarter notes back to back. Now, Nicolette, what's the range of the notes? How far did they, what's the lowest note and what's the highest note? A. A is the lowest note, and what's the highest note? B. 